hello friends today in this video we are going to learn how to identify cash and credit transactions so here some rules are given so one by one we will go through all the rules and we will understand how to identify cash and credit transactions and then later on we will discuss how to record those transactions in the books of accounts so let's see a transaction is regarded as cash transaction if the word cash is mentioned in the transaction it means that if in the transaction word cash is given then that is the cash transaction so to support this rule here we have one example and see this example brought goods for cash dollar 5000 from a it means they we purchase goods and we purchase goods from a the name of the supplier is also given but apart from this here it is clearly mentioned that we brought goods for cash so word cash is given it means we purchase goods on the cash basis so this is the cash transaction so i think you understood the first rule if in the transaction word cash is given it means that is cash transaction now see the second rule in the second rule see what is given if in the transaction name of supplier or buyer is not mentioned so in that case also we will assume that the transaction is conducted on the cash basis so here we have an example so see the example brought goods dollar 5000 so we we brought goods we purchased the goods but we don't know from whom we purchase the goods the name of the supplier is not given so we will assume that we brought goods and we paid money to the supplier so this is also cash transaction so so these are the two rules two circumstances in which we will consider the transaction is on the cash basis now see when we will consider a transaction as a credit transaction so see the first rule if in the transaction word on credit or on account is given in the transaction is mentioned in the transaction then in that case that transaction will be considered as a credit transaction so here we have an example to support uh, this rule so see that example sold goods on credit dollar six thousand so see in this transition we can easily see that word on credit is used word on credit is mentioned so it means it is credit transaction we sold goods and the payment is pending so this is the credit sale now see the second rule if in the transaction the name of supplier or buyer is mentioned but the word cash is not mentioned if in the transaction the name of supplier or buyer is given but the word cash is not mentioned so in that case also we will consider that transaction as credit transaction so see the example sold goods to mr john dollar 6000 so here the name of the buyer is given and word cash is also not used so it means it is credit sale we sold goods to mr john and still the payment is pending so this is the credit transaction now let's see how we will record these transactions in the books of accounts our first transaction is broad goods for cash dollar five thousand from a so this is our first transaction now to record this transaction first we are to identify the accounts affected by this transaction and the accounts affected by this transaction are cash account and goods account and we know that cash account and goods account both are a real account and the rule of real account is debit what comes in credit what goes out and we know that we purchased goods so goods came in the business so debit what comes in and we paid cash five thousand dollar so 
cash gone out so credit what goes out so to record this transaction we will debit goods accounts and we will credit cash account but in place of goods account we will consider purchase account as we are purchasing goods so in place of goods account we will write purchase account now let's see what journal entry we will pass in the journal for this transaction so first we will write date in the date column but in the question date is not given so we will write the serial number now we will write the debit item and purchase account is the debit item so we will debit the purchase account and we will write the amount in the debit column dollar 5000 then we will record the credit item and we know that cash is the credit item so we will record cash account and the amount we will write in the credit column dollar 5000 so this is the entry for the first transaction now let's see entry for the second transaction our second transaction is broad goods dollar 5000 so in this transaction also we brought goods and we paid dollar 5000 so we will pass same entry as we passed entry for the first transaction same entry we will pass for the second transaction also after the second transaction see the third transaction sold goods on credit dollar 6000 so here we sold goods on credit basis so let's see what general entry we will pass for this transaction so first we will identify the accounts affected and the accounts affected are goods and uh, and the person to whom we sold the goods but the name of the person is not mentioned here so we will uh, write debtor in place of uh, the name of that person we will write debtor or we can write customer also so these are the accounts affected by this transaction goods and debtors and we know that uh, goods uh, is a real account and debtors uh, is a personal account so and the rule to record a real account is debit what comes in credit what goes out so goods account will be credited because we sold goods it means that uh, goods gone out from the business so credit what goes out and the rule to record personal account is debit the receiver credit the giver so we sold goods so this is the customer this is the person to whom we sold the goods so he received the goods so debit the receiver so it means to record this transaction we will debit the debtors account and we will credit the goods account but in place of goods we will write sales account as we are selling the goods now let's see entry in the journal so transaction number second for transaction number second same entry we will pass and now let's see transaction number third in transaction number third first we will debit the debtors account and uh, the amount is dollar six thousand and then we will uh, write the credit item and the credit item is sales account and the amount we will write in the credit column so this is the entry for the third transaction now let's see our fourth transaction our fourth transaction is sold goods to mr john dollar six thousand so here we know the name of the person to whom we sold the goods so this is also credit sale so first we will identify the accounts affected by this transaction and the accounts affected are goods and the person to whom we sold goods and here we know the name of that person and that is mr john now we know that uh, 
गुड्स इज ए रियल अकाउंट एंड मिस्टर जॉन इज ए पर्सनल अकाउंट एंड द रूल टू रिकॉर्ड रियल अकाउंट इज डेबिट वॉट कम्स इन क्रेडिट वॉट गोज आउट सो गुड्स अकाउंट विल बी क्रेडिटेड एज वी सोल्ड गुड्स सो गुड्स गॉन आउट फ्रॉम द बिजनेस सो क्रेडिट वॉट गोज आउट एंड मिस्टर जॉन इज द रिसीवर ऑफ गुड्स सो डेबिट द रिसीवर एज पर द रूल ऑफ पर्सनल अकाउंट डेबिट द रिसीवर सो वी विल डेबिट मिस्टर जॉन अकाउंट एंड वी विल क्रेडिट सेल्स अकाउंट एज वी आर सेलिंग गुड्स सो इन प्लेस ऑफ गुड्स वी विल क्रेडिट द सेल्स अकाउंट सो लेट सी द जर्नल एंट्री फॉर दिस ट्रांजेक्शन सो फर्स्ट वी विल राइट द सीरियल नंबर देन वी विल रिकॉर्ड द डेबिट आइटम एंड हियर द डेबिट आइटम इज मिस्टर जॉन सो मिस्टर जॉन्स अकाउंट एंड वी विल राइट द अमाउंट इन द डेबिट कॉलम डॉलर सिक्स थाउजेंड एंड देन वी विल रिकॉर्ड द क्रेडिट आइटम एंड द क्रेडिट आइटम इज सेल्स अकाउंट एंड द अमाउंट इज डॉलर सिक्स थाउजेंड सो दिस इज द एंट्री फॉर आर फोर्थ ट्रांजेक्शन